everyone, I'm Ms. Kara from the Wanta office, and today I'm going to be talking about Verb Network Strength Training, also known as VNEST. VNEST is a fairly new word-finding therapy technique, and it was developed by Dr. Lisa Edmonds. This treatment has shown positive results for individuals with fluent and non-fluent aphasia, who have diagnoses ranging from moderate to severe to mild. It is important to note that individuals using this therapy technique must have some ability to speak and or write their answers. This treatment focuses on verbs, which are connected to nouns. So by targeting verbs, you're also targeting the nouns by extension, which strengthens more words within the semantic network. Verbs are considered more difficult to learn than nouns because verbs must be completed by a noun. So to understand a verb, you must also understand the noun that is performing the verb. So I want everyone to take a second and think of the verb jump, but without a noun. You can't, it's impossible. So. This approach is similar to the complexity approach, which is typically used in articulation and phonology intervention. And the main idea behind this therapy approach is that by targeting later developing sounds or more complex sounds, this can lead to an increase in treated and untreated sounds, both within and across sound classes. Only a few complex sounds need to be trained in order to promote a change in the client's overall speech sound production. So back to VNEST, when choosing verbs to target in this therapy approach, they must be transitive verbs, meaning they must take an object. It is also important to choose verbs that are familiar, but not too generic, such as the verbs like or have. There are some steps in this therapy technique, which include agent-patient pairs, reading, WH questions, yes or no, repeat review, then you have to repeat step one with no cues, and then lastly, ask for a new example with the new verb. Now I'm going to show you how we do this therapy technique. So we are gonna start with the first step, which is agent-patient pairs. So you're gonna have the words who and what written out, and you're going to choose a verb to start with. So for the verb I'm going to use, I picked the word make. So you would ask your patient, who makes something? And they might tell you a baker. It's important to note that I already have these written out, but you're going to be asking your patient for examples and then writing them for them. And then you could ask them, what does a baker make? A baker make bread. makes bread, right? Okay, what else makes something? A bird makes a nest. And then what else? We could say a spider and they make a web, right? Then we would go on to the second step, which is the reading portion, and we would have the patient read out each sentence. So we keep moving this down with it. Baker make bread. Bird make nest. Spider make web. It's important to note, I'll go over this later, but it's important to know that grammar is not a concern during this therapy technique. So it's okay that we're not saying the baker makes bread. It, we're just gonna read it like that for now. <clears throat> After this step, we're gonna choose one of the sentences that we made and I'm gonna use the Baker example and we're gonna go on to the WH question portion of this therapy technique. So the questions we're going to be asking are where, when, and why. So first you're gonna ask, where does a baker make bread? And they would probably respond, at a bakery. Then you'd say, when does a baker make bread? Probably in the morning, right? <clears throat> and then finally, why? So his customers can buy some, right? Nice and simple. We would have these written out with our patient. We'll write them out with them if we need to. So then we would read it all together. A baker make bread at the bakery in the morning so his customers can buy some. So that's the end of that portion. Then we'd go on to yes, no questions. And we would use our verb that we chose, so the make verb. And we would show them yes or no. And we would ask our patients, does a bird make a web? And they would tell me no, or point to no. And you would ask them different questions like that using your verb. Finally, you would go on to the review step and you would ask your patient, what verb did we, walk, like, what verb did we work on today? And they would tell you make. So this gives them a, an opportunity to retrieve that verb independently. Sometimes they may need an extra cue, but this is a great opportunity for them to show that they remember what we worked on. It is important to note that grammar is not a concern during this therapy technique. For instance, if the target verb is drive, when the agent and patient are added to form a sentence, the sentence may read, the bus driver drive the bus, instead of, the bus driver drives the bus. 
If the client is unable to generate nouns independently, then written options will be provided for the client to choose from. During the review step, make sure to ask your client which verb he or she is working on. This allows the client to retrieve the word independently. We also have written down examples of what we do for this therapy technique. So we have them written like this, and it's simply as a visual stimuli or prompt to help the client remember the sentences for the reading step, and it also helps store the phonological representation of the word in the semantic network. So most noun-centered therapies target single word noun production, and while there is an increase in lexical retrieval for the trained nouns, generalization of sentences and discourse has been insignificant. In this therapy approach, participants create their own examples of agent-patient pairs and no picture is being represented, so they must form their own image within their head, which may help to increase generalization. There is increased generalization seen using this therapy technique. It is even seen in words that were not originally targeted during the therapy session. And this is typically not seen in other types of word-finding therapies, so that's very important to consider when choosing the correct therapy for your patient. And professionals are not able to determine which verb therapy technique is the most effective yet because gains have been reported from all different approaches and different approaches may benefit different individuals. So it's important to keep that in mind when choosing a therapy technique for your patient. Thank you.